Amid a rain of shot and shells, the British army stationed in Kyushu wiped out the huge Japanese force assembled to retake the island. Such tremendous losses could only be followed by more losses of territory, as the British army marched onward stronger than ever. In Honshu, the same fate met the Swano clan, but the distraction that short war provided allowed a previously unknown army to strike the recently occupied province of Hiroshima. Listen up, you lot. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it or anything. We've got quite the day ahead of us. Out there, there's loads of them. And in here, there ain't loads of us. No idea if the brass even know what's happening, so you better not be sitting at the back gambling on the cavalry arriving. You've all had a good run. You got to see a fair bit of the world now, didn't you? Might not get all the years, but you've had a lot more decent than most of the blotters who came before us, don't you think? So no complaining, no moaning, and if you must be sad, keep it to your damn self. All you gotta do now is earn a bit of glory for your hometown by going down like some sword swashing hero. Nothing more dangerous than a man backed into a corner is there. And no man more dangerous with a shooter than a British man is there. You know what? I think we might as well go ahead and give these Japs a little surprise. Don't feel like dying. Then you'll just have to win, won't ya? Hello there, it's time for some more honourable gentlemen. Right now the Yonago have us up against the wall as they breach our fort at Hiroshima. My strategy was just to stand around the edges of the fort shooting them and now that they're inside we'll do our best with the melees. The enemy don't have many dedicated melee units, they might even only have one. So that means using our fight to the death advantage inside the fort will give us the chance to kill lots of them once they're inside and we've already killed a fair few on their approach and we've even routed a few of their units already just with gunfire, especially the inferior ones. That's going to make things easier, but we are still going to take huge losses attempting to stop the enemy getting in. We've got a few spear levy to help us out with this, but mostly it's low quality ranged infantry who aren't going to be very good in melee. I've fallen back from the wall here to make some space for our gunners to keep shooting as the enemy get in. I've given up on actually defending the wall because we're running out of troops already. But that said, I think we've probably killed about half the enemy by this point in the battle and their commanders are now moving to engage as well. I've got a few gunners prepared to shoot them as they do that. So things are going okay, the enemy's morale is failing them, and for us it can't fail us due to the fight to the death mechanic, so we'll just have to see what we can do, everything's engaged, the enemy are just grinding against our troops, and we've got men off to the side shooting enemies who are engaged in melee, so that's going to help us out quite a lot actually, and thin the enemy out as they go through these melees, but will it be enough, we just have to see. On the south part of the castle, all these enemy officers coming in presented a challenge because they're going to be very good in melee and now our military police are going to have no chance. However, because again we can't rout, I've got these tiny units of seven or eight men who are just standing in the corners and they can shoot over at these melees and kill these Hatamoto good as any generic levy. So we are actually going to inflict casualties on these units in these fights. Same thing over here, there's a unit just off to the left shooting into this, plus they're fighting below the tower in this particular case, and that inflicted a fair bit of damage on that general's unit. He routes, that's much better than I expected for that engagement. The other general did defeat the unit they were engaging, but we've still got a few guys around here to keep the enemy occupied, keep them wandering around so the shots can keep coming in. In the north, it's really just a fight between a couple of our units and a couple of their units. At this stage, virtually the whole enemy army has retreated, but they do still have the advantage because the stuff inside the castle is better than what we have left. It's just up to our morale advantage to do something now. All of those generals are cleared out, and now a little gunfight starts as the enemy destroyed our melee units in the north, or the units I was using in melee. 
now it's just my backup units and they start shooting at us, we're going to start shooting at them. Although these levies were distracted by the arrival of a fresh enemy unit from the west, they'll now be stuck in melee. But again, we've got a few guys in the corner there just sniping away at the enemy and it's going to take the enemy ages to work through a unit that's fighting to the death. So just shooting into the edge of them with a couple of guys can get loads and loads of kills. More of them charge forwards to start a melee over here just next to the Tenshu and it really everything's coming down to these grinds at this point. We just need to somehow win. Not much we can do anymore in the way of tactics. We need to rely on the enemy routing. The police unit that got charged earlier is defeated by those enemy infantry. They now turn to engage the one last unit I have that's not really fighting. I've put them on the capture point so that when a melee breaks out, as it does here, the enemy can't take it, buying us more time to continue that other fight with the levies and try to bring down these line infantry. And while we have lost almost all the levies in the fight, the line infantry took substantial casualties as well and they rout and suddenly the balance bar swings into our favour. All of their strength was in that one quality unit. Now they just have their inferior unit left, and our tiny numbers are going to be enough to push them back. So, unexpectedly, and all of a sudden, we actually won the battle, just about. A heroic victory for our troops, although really it was also a Pyrrhic victory because we lost virtually everything to achieve this win. Still, as a defense, it was successful, and that's going to be incredibly convenient. You can see here everything's gone, but the same for the enemy, and the enemy did have a lot more, so it's more embarrassing for them. We were thrust right into another battle after that because some rebels went to attack Charles Alcock. It's just loads of cavalry, so a nice small-scale fight that will serve quite well as Charles' first battle in overall command, I think. What was it? A modicum of defense? I'll show you just what I know about stakes. Diamond formation, everyone. Lay out the stakes in front of you so that no angle is not covered by them. Their horses will be confounded by such an obstacle. Uh, sir, I think it would be better to place more stakes facing forward, sir. What if they go around and hit us from the back? Uh, with all respect, sir, they would not survive the gunfire if they did that, sir. They will use the shortest possible route, and that is to our front, sir. That's what they want us to think. You'll see soon enough. We should at least rotate the diamond so one side is facing them head on. The men do not have a clear shot like this. One more word, and you'll be at the very point with only a horse whip. Follow my orders. With our position prepared, we now just need to receive this massive cavalry charge from the enemy. Our stakes have been laid out and the enemy are going to go right through them, taking enormous casualties both to that and the fact we're shooting them just before they arrive. The balance bar swings to be almost entirely in our favour as massive numbers of enemy horsemen are killed by our defences, but some of them did get through and are now engaging our infantry and their charge bonus meant they actually killed quite a lot of us plus they have the follow-up unit here from, from their general and our units at the front are completely blown apart at the moment I needed to fold the entire army back into the front of the formation to resist the enemy cavalry we will win since they're so bogged down they can't do anything about our sheer number of infantry and soon the rest of the cav just run away as my own cavalry arrived too late to take part in the battle. A decisive victory but it was actually a little bit messy, it wasn't the ideal formation, it could have gone better, could have gone worse essentially. You can see on the results here that we did take huge losses in particular on one of the units and that's going to take ages to replenish. So that's a shame but at least no units lost and now the rebels are gone we can stop them from destroying our gold mine as they previously were doing got a few survivors here from the Yonago army we defeated and we can see the Yonago have captured the rebel territory to the east that I was hoping would be a buffer zone and mean we don't need to defend this area so now we do indeed have to defend it and we're going to bring John Alcock's army down even though there are now no Yonago forces for him to really fight meaning Charles will have to stay for a while in Owami and stay in command hopefully that will go okay in Kyushu, a bit of scouting reveals we've got some Hirado armies over to the west, so finally, Joss Arton may actually be challenged and not be able to just continue his rampage. 
We've also got this one unit of military police that our vassals gifted to us, but they've put it in a place where I actually can't move it into our own territory, so they're just going to have to wander the mountains of Kyushu for a bit. As for George Hook, he needs to increase the size of his army and replenish before he can really do anything. I'm going to have to use Japanese troops here. I was just comparing volunteer infantry versus conscript infantry. They're kind of the same, and maybe conscripts are actually a bit better, which is a bit confusing, maybe just a balancing issue there. Now as we move on, the Harado are coming at us with their army, destroying our farm on the way there but not attacking quite yet, so something's probably going to happen there. They get ships to fire at my military police for some reason, that seems a bit mean and unnecessary. The Matsue are still preparing something by the looks of things to challenge Charles up in Iwami. The Yonago bring over some not particularly substantial looking reinforcements and then do some raiding, pretty annoying. And then the Tatori, a faction we haven't had any interaction with yet appears in Kyushu with a fleet carrying an army and then immediately declares war on us. This is incredibly sneaky. I forgot the AI can do this. It only really does it in Shogun 2. It will just suddenly declare war on you right when it has the chance to attack you. And there you go. It just dumps its troops in Kyushu next to George Hook handily enough. So we are going to be able to put up a pretty serious defense against any attacks they make, but still very inconvenient. Joss Arton's pretty ready to defend himself, he's got an elite army at full strength, so pretty happy to just wait there and see if the Harado attack. Our vassal has fallen to rebels by the looks of things, so that's inconvenient, less money for us, but we will just have to ignore them for now because we've bigger fish to fry, and our police just going to wander into the Harado territory, maybe they can do something annoying later on. This Tatori army is mostly line infantry, and they're pretty good by the looks of things. Lots of experienced units, but we do have the numbers nearby to defend against them. John Alcock goes after the survivors from that previous Yonago army and brings them down easy enough. And I presumed I would also be able to attack that smaller reinforcement army, but we actually don't have the movement. That's kind of annoying because I immediately realized this army can just walk past me and attack Hiroshima again, and we've still got pretty much nothing defending it. So I was worried by that, but I thought their army is not very big. It probably won't actually be able to achieve anything there. However, they do try, and that's kind of annoying because we're left with a battle that it's very similar to the one we already fought earlier in this episode, only perhaps a bit easier and a bit smaller in scale. And I'm just going to use the exact same strategy, try to get a similar result, and we probably won't focus on this very much. I have enclosed for you the new braids you'll be needing, Mr. Hook. Considering your achievement thus far and the responsibility I entrust you with, to call you only Lieutenant Colonel is almost an insult. I dare say a man of your age has rarely advanced to such a rank, so I hope you will treat this opportunity with due diligence. I understand that things progress smoothly on your end, although I have reason to believe that the blasted telegraph operators are sabotaging our communications. There is a rumor that those Yank bounders have come up with some scheme to ship the Japs from their little enclave into our front gardens, rifles loaded. Do let me know if you catch any whiff of that. As for my own news, things progress in rough accordance with the original strategy. Seems to be some debate over where their capital actually is, but whatever the case, I'm sure we'll have old Captain Jack lodging there shortly. Continue as per your orders, and inform Colonel Arton to do the same, if he can keep his trousers on, and do see if you can slip a report or two past those devils in the telegraph office. There we have it then, another win, and it did indeed go pretty similar to the battle we saw earlier. Next, the Totori come to attack George Hook. As expected, they've just got loads of line infantry, and we've got loads of line infantry, but we also have a castle and naval support fire, so overall this should be in our advantage. We also have a toy to play with, some captured Japanese wooden cannons, so as the battle starts I can use them to hit the enemy from afar. The only problem with that is that wooden cannons are absolutely useless, and you can see here even virtually direct hits have no effect whatsoever on the advancing enemy, so we're not going to achieve much, I don't think. 
Anyway, the enemy set up in a big ring around the castle to start shooting at my garrison's troops. Behind the castle, meanwhile, their general found my reinforcement cavalry wandering around and started a fight. I was pretty up for that because we'll be able to win that fight and destroy their leadership as things get started. We're also going to be hitting the troops advancing in the east here with our navy guns and that's looking pretty effective, demolishing these units, lowering their troop count and morale to make their assault extra difficult. We're going to have more problems on the western side because the enemy have more troops here and they are quite effectively killing my gunners on the walls. They have lots of high level troops who will be much more accurate than usual so we are taking losses there but nothing too substantial at the moment. I move my cavalry to attack the enemy in the eastern part of the battlefield just because they were left with not very much outside the castle. A few guys stayed behind while the rest went in to try and make their assault and these cavalry quickly wipe out the guys who are still outside. As for the inside, the casualties taken already are so high that really they can't hope to achieve anything. I'm just moving back from the wall. Now these gunners will attack the enemy as they come inside and of course our gunners in the interior part of the castle will be doing the same. So that's all fine. I've also come back from the wall over here on the western part to draw the enemy in and just gun them down in exactly the same fashion. It actually went much easier even than I expected because once they got inside everything started routing and my spear levy who came over to block the enemy just destroyed everything and this caused a chain route. That won us the battle. Nothing special going on here. It seems the defender's advantage when you have so many guns is so large that you can just wipe aside forces equal to you without really a second thought. We lost something like 500 men, the enemy losing something like 3000 which was their entire force so that invasion has been crushed and we'll now get replenishment so our effective losses this turn will be a bit lower as well. So with that we make it to the next turn. We can take a look here at the Harado armies that are probably going to attack Jos Arten. They're building up their forces it seems. They seem to be getting stronger and stronger over there. I'm just going to put my cavalry outside the castle so that if they do attack we'll spawn some extra garrison units. As for George Hook, I thought we might actually move out somewhere now. Even though he's not at full strength, I thought we could start moving south and replenish a little bit along the way so we could be stronger for an attack on the Sacho somewhere, perhaps. Although after moving, I realise my replenishment's going to drop as I move away from the castle and technically move out of the region I was in. So I immediately had second thoughts and started moving back, thinking instead we'll go on the offensive once we have more troops ready. Now, John Alcock can go on the offensive right now. We're just going to move up to this bridge. That secures our defences pretty well because the enemy will have to go through us. I could actually attack the castle in front of me right now, but I wanted to stand on the bridge for this turn to get some replenishment and to see if the enemy would attack me on the bridge because that would be an advantageous way to take out their nearby armies. As for the survivors from that Yonago attack, we're just going to take them out with the garrison we've got left in Hiroshima. That's no problem at all. So now moving on again, the Harado do start advancing towards Jos Arten's position. First they're just raiding us by the looks of things, then they're trying to break this cheeky siege that I started. My military police that are trapped in that part of the map have to besiege either rebels or Harado to do anything there, so I thought I'd do it but obviously nothing came of it. They then went on to besiege Jos Arten without attacking him. The Matsue look like they're going to attack at some point, at least, still got forces moving about towards the front line. No action for John, just lots of movement, and then the Tatori drop another naval invasion on us. Didn't expect that. This time it's a slightly better choice of position. They can attack a Wami port right there. I wanted to see who these guys actually were because we haven't really encountered them. They're further down the coast in Honshu and they've got six regions so they're pretty substantial which I guess is why they can just throw stack after stack at us like this. So in this situation we can just move Charles back with a decent portion of this army to defend. That does mean our front line will be vulnerable but we've already seen the Matsue are sufficiently far away right now that this may not be a problem. There's their main force or what we can presume is their main force. I could actually try and use this agent to sabotage it so it can't move. 
but it's very expensive and not all that likely to work. And in this case, I decided to gamble that they can't reach us because it looks like a pretty long way for a single turn's movement. Now back to John, I'm going to actually go on the offensive this time, not going to try and lure them onto the bridge because I just don't think they're going to bother. We'll move right into this castle, nothing's in reinforcement range so we'll take that super easy and then just sit in it, see if any of these armies around the place want to come and attack it because of course we would win if they did. Looks like the enemy don't have anything substantial in the area and we'll sit here and replenish and build the place up etc. Now with the Harado siege situation, I started looking over the enemy's army compositions and noted that they're all pretty decent. And the other issue I found in this area is that we only have the lowest level of fort to defend ourselves, so we actually won't have that much of a defender's advantage, especially with a large army against large armies. Because of that, I decided we probably need to ask George Hook to come over and help, because this situation may not actually be easily resolved. Right, the boff has it for certain that it's going to rain most of the night, so this is the big day. Here's a map of their siege camp. It looks rather complete, sir. Although, that being said... Take the man out of the navy, but you can't take the navy out of the man, can you? I think you've got it, mate. The river, at night, in the rain? Take it at a leisurely pace and you'll be near as invisible. Rather hankering for a bit of a swim, sir. Sounds ideal. I don't suppose we have a waterproof vessel for your message, do we, though? Yep, your noggin. Messages. Get your ass up here, because it's all swarming with Japs. Anyone who will listen, but really, you've got to get to Hook. He's still at Nakatsu, probably. Telling everyone it's too early in the morning for a drink to celebrate his promotion, even at dinner. Will do, sir. I'll be the wet to his dry. The Hirado, after wasting some time shooting at my military police out there with their fleets, do indeed come to make this attack. So now we have to face it. They reinforced slightly, so things are looking a little bit worse than they were before. And you can see they've got lots of actual melee units. They've got samurai and ninja among their ranks. And because we're in this small fort, that's going to be a particular issue, since it's going to be hard to get away from them and stay out of melee. To start with, there was a fight outside the castle as my reinforcements with these two companies of King's own high quality line infantry met one of the enemy's line infantry. They got the first shot on us so we took some substantial losses right away but then once we start firing back our elite troops and their superior accuracy and fire rate will allow us to overcome that enemy unit. And of course we've got two companies versus their one so we're going to win even with equal quality hopefully. Now because the castle was so small, I had way more companies than I could use to man the wall, so I put several units outside and this tempted the enemy cavalry to try and attack them. I think that worked in our favour since although we did take losses from their charges, the close range fire from the walls damaged their cavalry quite a lot and many of their cavalry units turned out to be their officers as they kept just throwing them in, so that went quite well. Elsewhere, being outside the castle is less effective like here because of course now the the enemy can stay out of range of our gunners on the walls and just shoot my isolated units so these battles don't go particularly well. In this particular case though I can use my cav to support this beleaguered unit by destroying the nearby enemies, buying them a chance to just run away will bring them back inside the castle with the sitting outside the castle experiment having essentially failed. Elsewhere where I've got lower quality units outside I'm willing to leave them especially right here where we've got spear levy just receiving the enemy officers running in to their death that's what we like to see. Here a better charge from the enemy they're charging into our regular levy troops and that's going to do a lot of damage but again even though we're probably going to lose almost all of our units in that combat we are going to get some close range shots on the enemy officers and that's very useful. The enemy attack on the northern part of the castle was a bit more subdued. I've got my elite infantry on the walls here and they actually slightly outrange regular line infantry so while my men outside aren't even engaged by the enemy we can provide supporting fire from the wall above so there that general setup is more effective. 
The incoming reinforcements had to deal with some enemy ninjas who started coming at us. That's not going to be a problem because we could see them, so we'll just gun them down, and that's a very powerful enemy unit taken out of the equation. As for the rest of the enemy's melee units, we can't really achieve this. With our defences in the south cleared out by those early cavalry attacks and just general gunnery, now they can get inside the castle, and this is where the fun really begins for our men. Now we're going to have to have our ranged units somehow bring down the enemy samurai en masse. The units manning the wall take enormous losses immediately, of course, once they're into these melees since they're not suited for them. And in particular, they've got these high-level Tetsubo ninjas who can just annihilate line infantry. Their attack stat is so high that virtually every hit they make kills one of our men and we can't really damage them back. So they're going to be rampaging through our lines. My dragoons, who I sent outside, are now going to go up to the north and try to take care of all the fighting here, really, because we need to fold the troops on the northern wall back down to fight on the southern wall now, since we're going to be losing men rapidly. And those dragoons will be enough to take out those line infantry. Dragoons are actually pretty accurate, and they can ride down enemies once their morale is low. But here you can see these Tetsubo ninjas are just working their way through the castle, killing absolutely everything and taking minimal losses in exchange. We need to try and lock them down and shoot them, but we can't really buy ourselves time because they're killing us so quickly. And elsewhere, plenty of regular samurai and spear levy coming over the wall to deal with as well. The first response units are all gone and now we're just shooting into the melees, desperately trying to kill something, but many of our quality units are already dead and we're using things like military police and levies who aren't very good at shooting. The Dragoons completely cleared up the northern side of the battlefield, so they may be able to come back around to help us out in a moment, but are we actually going to have enough time to do that? Because soon, the enemy will have worked their way to the capture point. Because I'm a horrible person, I'm going to leave the result of this battle as a cliffhanger for next time. So that's all for this week, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to the Officially Devon Patrons for making this happen. We'll see the rest of that battle of course, and plenty of battles on the front line with the two Alcocks in the next episode of Honourable Gentlemen. <laughs>